Hello, I'm Denisa Muraru from Padua, Italy, and I'm here at the ESC Congress in London. I have the pleasure to be here with Dr. Gaba from uh, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, US. So, Prikit, can you tell me uh, a little bit about your study? I have heard that you have uh, presented a really interesting uh, research uh, focusing on patients admitted in the coronary care unit. Can you tell us more about it? Yes, definitely. So um, the basis of our study was to create a novel score that combines both clinical characteristics that have been verified by prior scores, such as the Charleston Comorbidity Index, and combine them with um, echocardiographic parameters because echocardiography is becoming so much more popular these days with the handheld devices, etc. So how did you develop the idea, basically? Did you identify uh, some gap in the current uh, scores? Yes, that's a great question. So um, in the ICU or in intensive care settings in general, currently there are existing scores. For instance, the Apache 3 score, the SOFA score, the SAPS 2 score are all used in these settings to assess for mortality risk or assess prognosis of patients. But in the coronary care unit for cardiac patients, there's no specific score targeting this population that can assess mortality. And so because of this, we noted that there was a gap um, and potentially a gap that could influence the care of these patients. So we wanted to come up with a more, uh, a more specialized score for this subset. So you have enrolled quite a large number, impressive I would say, of patients. Uh, which are the kind of pathologies that you have included? Yes, so we've included patients, so our total cohort includes roughly 11,000 patients. Um, and uh, right now, we've only incorporated those patients that have all of the echocardiographic parameters of interest, so left ventricular ejection fraction, RVSP, etc. And they can range from a variety of cardiovascular um, comorbidities that are seen in the CCU from MI to acute coronary syndrome. Um, but uh, our total end that we were able to test our scores with was actually a little bit smaller than the 11,000 patients due to um, the fact that not all patients had their echocardiogram done in the CCU. So that's one limitation and maybe in the future we will assess this problem. Sure. So uh, finally, which are the findings of your study? Which are the clinical and echocardiographic predictors that you have included finally in this score? Yeah, definitely. So um, we created three different models, one with clinical parameters only, the second with echocardiographic parameters only, and a third that kind of incorporated, incorporated the two together, so clinical and echocardiographic parameters. And when we tested and compared all of these with each other, we found that the combined score that incorporated both clinical and echo parameters was the most um, predictive and had the highest area under the curve value. And um, this clinical score included clinical parameters such as diabetes, hypertension, acute um, kidney disease, and lung problems. And the echocardiographic parameters that were most significant in our cohort were left ventricular ejection fraction and right ventricular systolic pressure, which have all been verified by prior studies as being important. And when combined together and tested against existing models, such as the Apache 3, SAP, SOFA, and Charleston Comorbidity Index, our score actually had better or equal predictive value to those existing scores. And when you look at the number of parameters that are included in our score, it's only six, whereas the Apache 3 has nearly 22 parameters and others have way more. So um, we were able to conclude that our score is actually quite predictive and uh, simpler to use in an intensive care hospital setting. That's really interesting. Congratulations. Thank what you. about the right ventricle? Did you consider to include it in this score? Um, yes, yeah, so we did actually assess several different echocardiographic parameters, mm -hmm. um, as I had mentioned earlier, but only right ventricular systolic pressure was significant um, when the multivariate analysis was conducted, and so we only included that one at the That's current interesting. Moment. Probably you are not able yet to assess very well the right ventricle. What do you think? <laughs> That's possible. Perhaps uh, innovations in how we conduct echocardiogram, etc., will allow us to eventually utilize that data. Um, and perhaps can provide more prognostic information that we can eventually incorporate into the score. So what's next now? What are your plan for the future? Do you want to uh, validate this, uh, this score in a multi-center setting? Yes, that is exactly our future steps. Um, because we are limited in the number of patients, 
uh, because not all patients had all of the echocardiographic parameters that we were looking for. Uh, we would like to combine data from other settings. Furthermore, there is variability in how echocardiograms are recorded. So, you know, some echocardiographers may have a particular way of recording it. Maybe at some centers it's different than others. So we'd want to try to normalize that uh, with conducting a multi-center trial or assessment of the CCU score. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, this excellent study and good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you.